Just days before the provincial election here in New Brunswick, the anti-poverty group NB Acorn held a rally outside the legislature calling for an end to legislated poverty. Activists called attention to the ongoing affordable housing crisis, saying the province under progressive conservative leader Blaine Higgs had ignored tenants and favoured landlords. The protest came just as Statistics Canada released new figures showing that although growth in rental prices has slowed down, it's still one of the main contributors to inflation across the country. In New Brunswick, rent growth slowed significantly over the past year but still grew by 10.1%, exceeding the nationwide average of 8.2%. The Liberals, Greens, and NDP have all promised a residential rent cap, a policy that Higgs implemented temporarily in 2022. The government rejected calls for a permanent rent cap after letting that policy expire. The Liberals have called for a 3% rent cap compared to 2.5% for the Green Party and 2% for the NDP. Green Party leader David Kuhn has said he will introduce a permanent rent cap tied to the unit, not the tenant, so that landlords can't jack up prices between tenants. This week's rally came just as the Common Front for Social Justice issued the results of a policy questionnaire for the parties on topics such as the minimum wage, paid sick days, and social assistance rates. The Liberal Party didn't respond to the questionnaire, but provided a letter to the Common Front restating their platform commitments, the group said, leaving them with questions about where the party led by Susan Holt stands. The Common Front gave the most favorable review to the Green Party, but said their promised increases to social assistance rates don't go far enough. The NDP, which has failed to hold a seat in the legislature since 2015, said some of those issues, such as employer-funded uniforms and better overtime pay, would have to be discussed internally. For their part, the Tories didn't respond at all to the Common Front questionnaire. That party also received a failing grade from the NB Coalition of Persons with Disabilities on issues including health care, affordability, housing, and employment. The disability rights group said Blaine Higgs's party had ignored our community. NB Acorn has been campaigning for changes including an increase in support payments for people with disabilities to $2,078 per month from current rates that remain well below the poverty line. The group recently held a rally in downtown Moncton in the pouring rain. That rally was attended by Green Party Moncton South candidate Vince Marola. Here's what he had to say. Uh, it's very important and actually as a matter of fact our Green Party platform speaks to a lot of what you've heard today. It's been a really great turnout even in the pouring rain and it's wonderful to see our allies uh, both from the Common Front for Social Justice and from ACORN here standing up for, uh, for, for rights for people. Uh, starting with uh, for today's rally around um, uh, raising the rates as, uh, as people know as was mentioned here earlier the rates for disability is a poverty rate. Social assistance rates in this province are a poverty rage, wage. Uh, $560 a month is certainly not enough to get by, uh, especially as the uh, price of everything continues to go up. A green government would assure, uh, would guarantee livable income, and, and until we get that, all the rates would be raised. Uh, that's part of our platform. We also are calling on uh, putting a rent cap in a place of 2.5%. So uh, being here with our, our, our grassroots organizations is very much foundational to, to the actions of what we're doing with the Green Party. The NDP's Rebecca Rogers was also in attendance, but later dropped out of the race. The rates that exist in this province right now are totally unacceptable. They are so low that people cannot survive on them. They need to be raised, and they need to be raised significantly. In response to a query from the NB Media Co-op, the Liberal Party sent this statement attributed to Susan Holt. She said, my team and I have consulted with members of the disability community and strongly support their nothing about us without us motto. A Holt government would not claw back any benefits and would reassess the program details once the federal increase takes place in July, she said. She added, we agree that the programs must be reviewed to ensure that they are not perpetuating the cycle of poverty. As for the Conservative Party, which has campaigned on its record of fiscal austerity, it didn't respond to any questions from the NB Media Co-op during this election cycle. Election day is Monday, October 21st. For the NB Media Co-op, I'm David Gordon Koch. Uh, hello, everyone. Yep. <laughs> Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone and thanks for joining us today. Uh, thank you for coming out. I know it's a rainy day, so uh, you know we, we still want to do this because it's very, very, very important. It's actually crucial that people uh, living on disability are able to actually live in housing. 
and not wind up on the street. They are the most vulnerable people in society, so that is why we are here. So my name is Peter and I'm a member and provincial co-chair of New Brunswick Acorn. Um, I'm also the MC today for this rally. Uh, for those who are unaware, ACORN stands for Association of Community Organizations for Reform Now. <coughs> ACORN Canada is a multi-issue, membership-based community union of low and moderate income people. We believe that social and economic justice can best be achieved by building community power for change. So today we're holding our third rally regarding New Brunswick ACORN's Tenants Vote Election Platform discussion of our four key demands for the New Brunswick provincial election. Previously, we talked much about the need for rent control, affordable and attainable housing for all and better tenant rights. Our last rally was regarding the elimination of energy poverty and today's rally is about an equally important issue of, uh, for low and moderate income people face. The need for a raise in the amount of disability support payments in the province, an end to punitive clawbacks to disability support program payments, and an end, an absolute end to the household income policy because that is discrimination. When this government here, here, here. refuses to treat everybody as equal citizens and literally finds ways to keep people living on their own and in poverty, that is legislated poverty and that needs to change. Shame! So today we have a full plate of speakers. Uh, first off, we have a statement written uh, by the founder of a New Brunswick Coalition of People with Disabilities, uh, sorry, the chair of New Brunswick Coalition of People with Disabilities, Shelley Petit. Uh, Muriel Petrie, the founder of the uh, NBCPD, was scheduled to speak, but is unavailable due to sickness. So Muriel, we hope she is feeling better soon. Uh, that said, coming up to read uh, this statement from the New Brunswick Coalition of People with Disabilities is my fiance and a member and leader of New Brunswick Acorn. Let's welcome Vanessa to the stage, please. Hey, Vanessa. Yay. Hey, Peter. In NB, 35.3% of the population have one or more disabilities. That would be more than one in three. Yet, here in New Brunswick, we are treated like second and third class citizens. When you're unable to work due to your body and disability, or unable to work due to a gross lack of accessibility in New Brunswick, then your choices, options are limited. You are forced to live on provincial disability. This means a maximum of $918 per month. Can you live on that? No, no way. Persons with disabilities can't. The government likes to say the money is only part of the support. And what we forgot to mention is that yes, on paper, there are rent subsidies to help pay for apartments. <coughs> But it's only if you can get one. With a list of over 10,000 names on the wait list, chances are slim. Then there's a struggle to find an accessible unit. We all know how hard it is to find any apartment out there, let alone one of less than 5% that are accessible. Today, there are 137 properties for rent. This would include boarding rooms, which are never accessible and don't qualify for rent subsidies. One of all those listed, less than seven, are accessible. Shame. 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 If you do happen to find one, which is a very big if, that co the costs are often ridiculous. The province limits you to $1,150 per month for rent subsidy, but refuses to put in a rent cap. Change. Change. An accessible unit in Fredericton runs about $1,850 per month. 
So let's review those numbers. You get $918 per month to live. Government says that if you can get a red sum, sub, must be under $1,150 per month. All the while knowing an accessible unit runs $1,850. I don't know how anyone can make the math, that math work. You get a roommate. If you have a subsidy, you can each have a room. And both of you must have a disability. You can't get married or live with a partner because you become their financial responsibility. Shame! Almost as though the government says we are a pet. Shame on them. Shame on the system who thinks it's okay to treat someone this way. Ever. What happened to humanity? Absolutely no one woke up today and said, you know what, I want to be a person with a disability. <laughs> but there are more than 300,000 of us in NB. We demand better from the government. We want a life of equity, equality, and dignity. Yeah. We want to be able to participate in our communities. Is that really too much to ask? No. Remember, any of you can wake up tomorrow with a disability. What will you do? Where will you live? How will you survive on $918 a month? What will you do if you don't have a doctor to file oodles and oodles of paperwork the government wants from you? How will you get a doctor? to doctor appointments. And if you do, what happens if you find out that the building is not accessible? Or if you need to go to a food bank only to learn it's not accessible, how will you survive? Life doesn't have to be this hard with a disability, but choices made <coughs> by this government continue to make, the, make it this hard. It's completely unacceptable. With you, and with your ballots, let's make life equally hard for them. Uh, please welcome up to speak a leader in her own right and a big part of New Brunswick Acorn team here in Moncton, Patty Metten. Go, Maddie, go! Well, I'm here to talk about the fact that 918 a month is not enough to live on. We want it We want it to be $2,078 a month. Yeah. That's what we're asking for. That's right. That's not unacceptable, is it? No. I don't no. think so. It's only the poverty go. line. It's the poverty line. Okay. I live on disability. I don't get enough to live on. And um, that would be a great amount for me. With rent and utility bills and other bills that I have to pay for, I have to go to the food bank twice a month. Thank God that food bank is accessible. I have a walker over here that I use. And it, it's, a, it's accessible to the, P, the Peter McKee food bank. I go every two weeks to get food from the food bank. Sometimes that's three times a month, thank God. But uh, shouldn't have to go to the food bank. We should have enough money coming in from the government to be able to not go to the food bank. Woo! Okay? We shouldn't have to go to the food bank. No. Okay? And um, the electric bill. Want to talk about being ripped off? <laughs> ripped off. Electrocution. Electrocution is right. Okay. They're milking us for all they're worth. Twenty-five dollars. What is it? Twenty-five dollars, Peter? Every 
every few months that they that they upped it. Yep. Every, every three months it goes up twenty five dollars. Electrocution. The electrocution is damn right. Sorry. <laughs> oh, say your piece, it's all good, it's all good. I'm really not impressed with the electric company, and Higgs is doing nothing but allowing it to happen. Hey! Hey! Okay, we need a new leader in this province that will listen to those of us that are disabled. If you are disabled, or never vote before, get on the list to vote. He he can't he can't deny you the right to vote. Register to vote if you're disabled or you never voted before. Vote. Tell Higgs that you're not impressed with the way he's been doing the government. Because we're not impressed, are we? No. no. Okay. We need better government, okay? We need the disability rate to go up. We need the taxes to be lower. Just saying. <coughs> we need um, the electric bill to go down. We need the, the people that are rich to be taxed more. And those of us that are poor to be taxed less. I'm just saying. Woo! Just saying. Okay, I'm just adding, adding, adding. But we're here to talk about disability rates, and I'm telling you that we need more money to go to disabled people like myself. I've been on disability for over 20 years, and what they started me on 20 years ago is what I'm still on today. Shame. Shame. Shame! And it isn't right. Okay? It is not right. 20 years ago, it was like, woohoo! Look at what they're giving me! Now it's like, whoa, this is not good. I can't live on this. Okay? And we need more entity housing. Yes. That's accessible for disabled people like myself with a walker or a wheelchair or even a cane or somebody that's got visual disabilities or whatever disability you got, it's got to be accessible. Okay? You can't just make it willy-nilly and have stairs and not an elevator. And by the way, I'm going to mention about the elevator. Yeah, you go right okay. ahead. You go right ahead. This is good news. This is good news, okay? Five years ago, my elevator broke down. One of them did. Okay, and we talked about this. It broke down in my building. We had two elevators. One of them broke down for good when COVID hit. And they said, we're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. Yeah, right. It took until now for them to fix it. Five They're years. finally Ooh. fixing it. They are finally replacing the old elevator. And they're not doing anything with the other one that needs to be fixed, but at least we're getting a new elevator. Oh. All right. Okay. Yeah. And you know why they're getting a new elevator? No. Because I spoke up about it and I went to the RTT and I went to the landlord and I went to uh, Acorn and I said we've got a problem yep. how can you help me yep. and they helped me Woo! Thank and you, I'm, the, I'm the reason that we got this uh, this uh, uh, thingamajig the, the, the <laughs> <laughs> Do flanky. We got, no, we got the landlord registration started Thank because we realized what the problem was, and so we, as Acorn, took the power and power to the people. And the one thing that I always say is the people united will never be defeated. Well, guess what? She was not defeated in getting this fixed up. She pressured them, and we backed her up.
That is what Acorn does for tenants. And that is really good news, Maddie, and you should be very, very proud. I am. I am very proud. And I just thought I'd take this opportunity to say that Acorn works. And as a group, you helped me. I spoke up. You helped me. And let's do this. Let's get this rent, uh, the, 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 increase, the increase in disability. Yep. Who's next? Out of an acorn, big things happen. <laughs> Who's next? Carly. Carly? Come Carly. on up, Carly. Oh, actually, I'm just going to do that. All right. Uh, thank you, Maddie. Uh, wow. Uh, but yeah, that's really good news. And that shows just what the work that we do. We back up the tenants. We back up the people when they say that there's a problem and the, the landlords don't pay attention. The province doesn't pay attention. Well, we get all of the, the politicians. We speak in the media. We do the things that are necessary to draw attention to it. We're not going to stop. We've got to keep on going. This is a small victory. It is a step in the right direction. So thank you, Maddie. And honestly, we do know that truly living with disabilities is hard enough. But not having enough to live on and not feeling secure and safe in housing clearly makes a difficult situation even more stressful. Here in New Brunswick, we need to do better and it is possible. And it is possible by everyone speaking up and saying enough, this has to change. That is what ACORN does. And I, I hope that everyone will definitely let others know that we exist and keep up the fight. So uh, at this time, I'm just going to go through uh, ACORN's demands in regards to raising uh, provincial disability rates. And then I'm going to speak a little bit about a recent experience that I've had. Um, what people need to understand is that anytime and for any reason, anyone in New Brunswick can become disabled. I know, because if you asked me 25 years ago, if I was going to be disabled, I would have said, no way, not going to happen, everything's perfect. Well, guess what? Life happens. You know, here we are now. Things change, and that's the thing that everybody needs to understand. Have a little bit of empathy for the people and not say, oh, I, I'm immune to all of this. Because maybe you're not. So, people on disability support in the province they live in abject poverty. As a society, it is paramount to support people who are the most vulnerable through no choice of their own. Regarding disability support, ACORN is calling on all political parties running in the provincial election to increase provincial disability support payments to $2,078, to end punitive clawbacks to disability support program payments, and an end to the household income policy altogether. First off, what we are seeing is ever rising rents in New Brunswick because of no provincial rent cap. Now, roughly 80% of people who have disabilities actually live in rental housing. So they are the people most affected by a lack of not just, not just affordable, but also finding attainable housing that they have. Frequently, as well, housing is not disability friendly, nor is it affordable for anyone receiving disability benefits. And many people who are disabled will always tell someone who has a disability, hey, why don't you move into NB housing? A statement that in no way reflects the true reality in New Brunswick for people living with disabilities. Do you know that right now there's 10,000 people on a waiting list uh, for NB housing? Now that said, because of the extremely long list, people with disabilities cannot rely solely on NB housing and need to obtain housing in the private sector of the housing market. There's no way around it. Now that said, the reason we are asking for disability support to be raised to $2,078 is because it is a market basket amount, which does take into effect things like inflation, the average cost of groceries, transportation expenses, and medical needs that are not covered through the provincial government's white card, uh, white card program social development offers. So over-the-counter medications and medical equipment, for example. 
That's what we, that's the reason why. Now, along with this, people with disabilities face added hardship dealing with rising electricity, cell phone, and internet costs. In fact, having a phone and internet is actually essential, absolutely essential for people living with disabilities. It's actually their lifeline. It is their link to the outside world, especially if they have a, a immunocompromised system. They have the internet, it is a way to be in contact with family, friends, medical, whatever they need. So that has to be there for it. Now consider this, New Brunswick Acorn considers that nobody should ever need to allocate more than 30% of their income towards housing. The average rent needed to rent a room in a rooming house currently sits at around $600 to $700 a month. The average rent for a bachelor apartment in New Brunswick currently sits at $802. Those are sub substantial numbers. We also need to consider that not all landlords will accept being a part of the NB Housing Supplement Program. Many have said they're simply not interested. One thing most New Brunswickers don't understand is how little someone uh, is getting uh, disability assistance actually receives. I checked this last night. In New Brunswick, a single person receiving Sorry. Provincial Disability Assistance receives a grand total yearly of $9,370. Now there is some top-ups, but that's not even substantial. Now, imagine how difficult it is to try to live on that amount in this, uh, on this amount. It's horrible, and it is the lowest in all of Atlanta, Canada. Now, I checked this through. In Nova Scotia, a single person receiving disability benefits receives $12,406. Now, while in PEI, a person receiving disability assistance actually gets $18,132. $18,132 in PEI. Now let's keep in mind that PEI has the smallest population of any province in all of Canada. Therefore, they have the smallest number of provincial taxpayers in Canada as well. And still, they can pay almost double the amount of disability support to their province's disabled people. New Brunswick has absolutely no reason not to increase disability rates. It can, and it should be done. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Now, uh, just going through the, the demands, on the subject of punitive clawbacks to disability support, there's many things that can reduce a person's disability support. Imagine somebody working or volunteering even part-time, for instance, for an extended period of time, they can lose some of their disability support payments just for, uh, for, for that. You know, it shouldn't be clawed back because somebody decides that they want to work a little bit and maybe one month, you know, they, they make a little bit more, you know, to the average and that's it. You know, that sort of thing though, we shouldn't be punitive, punitive or towards someone who's volunteering for God's sake, like that's just wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Lastly, New Brunswick Acorn would like to see an end to the household income policy altogether. The household income policy actually uh, states that if someone who is disabled is married or in a common law relationship with someone who is not listed as disabled, they do not qualify for provincial disability assistance, period. Yay. It's like the government is unreasonably penalizing a disabled person for choosing to be in a relationship with someone they love. It is wrong, and it is a form of legislated poverty. Regarding the household income policy, I'm just going to speak about my personal experience regarding applying or trying to apply for some provincial assistance. So for me, my only choice was to apply for federal CPP disability, simply because I live with my fiance Vanessa. Vanessa works, and she's not listed as disabled. Even though she is partially disabled, to them, it doesn't apply. That's horrible.
All I want to do is be able to pay my fair share of the bills and help out equally in the house. It should not be her responsibility to have to buy my medications, pay my bills, take care of everything for me. It's just wrong. You know, uh, so if we can have a federal disability program that doesn't look at a household's income and who they live with, we certainly should have this as a right provincially in our province, federally. They look only at the disabled person as an individual, as it should be. By the way, even though I live with my fiance, I got CPP disability. It took a long time, but I finally got it. So at least we have the security, which we almost ran, we ran behind on all our bills, ran all our credit cards up, everything to the max. Didn't even pay the full rent last month. Then I got the disability, so I got it caught up, but just barely. I could have, we, we could have been basically way behind on the rent and faced eviction because of this. It's wrong. So we need to do better in this province and take care of the most vulnerable in society. We need to keep everyone housed and living with dignity. Um, so that's my speech, uh, thank you. Uh, we have a last speaker of the rally, uh, who is uh, Carly DeWitt. Now Carly is an active member of New Brunswick ACORN, and she's also a member of the New Brunswick Coalition of People with Disabilities. She is a fantastic writer of poetry uh, and works some of her poetry into the activism she does, speaking out about housing and disability rights. So please welcome Acorn's very own poet, poet laureate, Carly DeWitt. Go Carly, go! <laughs> <laughs> Social assistance rates, you have been so low while prices continue to skyrocket, making survival difficult. We need the rates to rise up so many people can have the chance to eat healthier and have some peace of mind. And there's a little bit more. It's okay, take time. Peace of mind or pizza mind? <laughs> Peace of mind. <laughs> we need rates for uh, peace of mind too. Sending out ripples of positive change. Yes, uh, social assistance rates, you need to rise up. Thank you. Woo! Oh, oh, okay. All right, thank you, Curly. That is really good. It's short and it's straight and direct to the point. Well said as, as always, Curly. Uh, you know, we love that you love, love your writing and your poetry. Okay, uh, so uh, that's our rally. Uh, I do want to thank everyone for joining us today. Just before we wrap up, I want to remind everybody that we have a provincial election coming up. Since the launch of NB Tenants uh, Vote Election Platform, we've had rallies. We have spoken with the leaders and MLAs and candidates from the Green Party, the Liberal Party, and the NDP. So we do need to ask one question here. And there's no way that Mr. Higgs and the PCs can say that they don't know who we are. We've been in the press <laughs> enough that they know we're around. We've talked to Joe Green. She knows who we are. Higgs knows who we are. So I'm gonna ask one question here. Where is Mr. Higgs? Where is the, uh, the Progressive Conservative Party of New Brunswick? They haven't reached out, they haven't talked to us, neither has the People's Alliance. So that just tells you who Cowards. they care about. Cowards. And they haven't approached us and they don't care. I know where Blaine is. Blaine is on Blaine's big blue bus. Get off the bus and talk to us. <laughs> exactly, and that's the problem, is that the PCNB and Higgs doesn't care about those of lower moderate income. Now there's a saying I once heard from my grandfather, and I believe it's true. He told me, one thing a politician 
who doesn't want to do the right thing hates the most, hates, sorry, <laughs> is, hates the most, is the poor person who votes. Higgs and the PC party need to be reminded at election time who they were supposed to serve. Yep. It's not just the rich folks and big corporate interests that they need to serve. They need to remember they serve all of us. <coughs> Four years ago, the province voted Higgs and the PCs into office. Clearly, they aren't helping everyone equally. We all know how much more we're struggling after the last four years. They failed at the job, and they need to go. How do we make sure that Higgs and the PC government don't <laughs> win the election? Vote! How do we make it clear that they have failed New Brunswickers of low and moderate income? That is it. We vote. We vote for the parental parties and the party leaders who came to actually listen to us, who reached out and spoke to us, listened to what we are saying and the suggestions we made to make life affordable for all. And make sure everyone around us needs to vote as well. So remember, it is our province. It does not belong to Irving. It does not belong to the big corporations. So I'm just going to ask, whose province is this? Ours. Our province. Whose province? Ours. Ours. Whose province? Ours. That's right. And together, by each of us voting in this election, we can decide who is the next New Brunswick Premier. We can decide which party wins the election. Now, there's a very familiar rally chant I've said quite often, and by voting, we can truly show New Brunswick that the people united will never be defeated. 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 All right, thank you very much, everyone, and uh, thank you for braving the rain. Uh, at least it sort of sort of held off for a little bit. But uh, no, thank you, everyone, for coming out, and really, we appreciate it. Uh, so that's what we have. I know it was rather quick, but you know, get yourself indoors, and I hope everybody has a great weekend. And please, 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 uh, we've got some flyers that we're handing out, this sort of thing. If anyone has not signed the petition, calling for the provincial premier, the provincial leaders to support a rent cap. Please contact us and please do. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Okay, thank you. Thank you.